Well, at the top of the hour, we gave you a look at the federal court documents that shows why the FBI searched former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago property. And the affidavit just released today reveals that 14 boxes with classified records were previously stored at the Florida home. Our law and safety expert, Dale Carson, here in studio with us. You are a former FBI agent. You have years of law enforcement experience. So tonight, he's helping us break down what this affidavit means. So, Dale, we know that a lot of those documents, they're redacted, of course. You look at it, it's like almost all right, black in right. some pages. The DOJ mostly shared how among those 15 boxes were confidential or top secret national defense documents and that they were in an unauthorized place. So the affidavit states anyone in possession of national defense documents, which information could be used to the injury of the U.S., shall be, quote, fined or imprisoned for 10 years. So can the former president even be charged with this crime? Well, that's yet to be determined. And clearly a search warrant is a key to open the door to where someone in law enforcement suspects there's evidence of a crime. And that's what we've seen here. In order to get that key, you have to swear to an affidavit in support of the search warrant. And that was done by an FBI agent who listed out in the affidavit that you're holding in your hand, a list of the reasons why the court ought to authorize the search. And in that affidavit, it points out that there are boxes of unsecured, confidential, and unclassified documents and some top secret documents stored in an unsecured space. Clearly, the Secret Service knew about that. Part of the probable cause in the affidavit is a statement that the FBI agent who, signed, who swore to the actual affidavit in support of the search warrant, knew from other Secret Service agents or Secret Service agents that these documents were there. And apparently there's been a conflict with the archive, the National Archives and the Trump Organization about turning over certain documents. So in answer to your question, yes, someone could be charged, but that doesn't necessarily follow. Simply because they find evidence, now they've got to prove that somebody in authority had the responsibility to either preserve or turn those documents back over, fail to do so, and therefore they can be charged. Who that is, is an open question. Right, so it might not necessarily be the former president himself. Well, that's correct. It could be staff members. So anybody, including secret servant agents. But um, could this really been handled in any other way, some other way? I mean, as far as, you know, the handling of the documents go, the search itself? As, as I said, the search warrant is a key to open a property to look for evidence of a crime. But it can be handled other ways. They could voluntarily have turned over the documents. So it's an open question as to why they chose that particular method in order to obtain the documents. They have them now. The country's safe if there were, in fact, documents there that were classified and should never have been disclosed to the public. However, the president had the authority to unclassify, to declassify certain documents. We don't at this point know whether there were documents there that still maintained a top secret clearance or, or designation. Because simply because they're stamped top secret doesn't mean they still are. Got it. Dale, thank you for that in-depth perspective there. And you can find the full affidavit on actionnewsjacks.com.